There is a point where sculpting, uh, especially for organic characters, in Dynamesh uh, starts to become a bit of a problem, and those are the moments, uh, you know, when you really want to start to focus on the finer details that is on your head. That is the moment where you want to be transitioning over from Dynamesh over to Subdivision. And we want to start to create our tertiary details, our skin pores, our wrinkles, these sorts of things. That is the perfect moment uh, I feel like uh, this is the perfect moment I feel like to spill tea all over my, <laughs> my mouse pad. <laughs> oh my god. Let me still take a sip because if I'm going to spill it, I will enjoy the sip I will take after that so that it is all worth it. So we are, uh, yeah, so transition zone from secondary to tertiary details is usually when I like to do it. How do we do that then? How do we bring this head from Dynamesh into a subdivision mode? Well, you know, there's a few ways we could do it. We could manually retopologize this head until we have a nice retopology, bring it back into ZBrush, continue working on that. That would work. Very tedious. You obviously don't want to have to do that more than once within your whole life. Other than that, you could also ZBrush this. You know, let's not do that here either, uh, because the topology is not necessarily the best for a head. And besides, uh, we would not have any sort of mouth bag. So I guess we want to maybe, how about transferring a topology from a head that already has been retopologized in the past to this head here. Doesn't that sound appealing? So why don't we do it? Why don't I give you guys a demonstration and then let's, let's talk about it afterwards. Let's just do it once. So let's take our base head in here. Let's add Balthier's head as a second subtool. Let me just go ahead here, take this head, move it down a little bit. So it's roughly in the same position. Let's go to our Z plugin. Let's go to something we call Z wrap. Now, th this isn't here by default, though. You have to buy this, unfortunately. You're like, OK, 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 OK. What is this thing here? This is interesting. Why don't we, uh, I don't know. Why don't we click on this here? Why don't we do something like that? Why don't we do something like that? I don't know what I'm doing, but we'll see what's going to happen. OK, why don't we go here then? And, uh, well, there's a button here. Okay, well, why don't we click on that, see what happens there. Eh? And, uh, oh, what's your, oh, this is interesting. Whoa. We're done. Ain't that nice. Ain't that wonderful. We are done. We have transferred our subdivided head, or rather our dynamished head of both here, into now a head that can be fully subdivided. It's as simple as that. Let's talk about the steps more in detail then. So this is using a plugin that we call ZRap. Now, as I said, ZRap does not come with uh, ZBrush. This is uh, something you have to buy externally, but the plugin itself isn't that, uh, that expensive. You know, if you um, have bought ZBrush legitimately, um, this is uh, only a part of that uh, in terms of price. Uh, you can find it from a site called Russian 3D Scanner. And uh, go to buy, and you just want to buy this little Z-Wrap thing. This one here, so the plugin. Ooh, the price actually went up. Oh, okay, no, no, sorry. So let's go for Indie in our case, right? So 99 USD dollars. Uh, not affiliated with Z-Wrap in any way. I've never spoken with the people there. It's just something that I think is just extremely useful, really. So uh, it pays for itself pretty quickly, I find, when you do a lot of this. And um, so Z-Wrap, once you've bought it, once you've installed it, you go to Z plugin here, it's simply going to uh, appear here in your Z plugin bar here. And then as a second subtool, so the order of subtools actually matters here, uh, believe it or not. As a second subtool, then what you want to have is your uh, dynamished head. And then once you have this kind of order of things, you quite simply go to your Z plugin, start Z wrap. And what you have here is pretty much two windows. On the left, you can see your retopologized head. On the right, you can see your dynameshed head. Now, uh, a few nifty options, perhaps. This may or may not be turned on by default. I believe this sync view button is on by default, which, as you can see, it means that when I rotate one camera, it rotates the other one as well. That's pretty nice. And then uh, also pretty nifty is these little uh, symmetry buttons right here. So I like to work by pressing this little X button here and this little X button there. So we will work with ZRAP in a symmetrical fashion there. So the basic idea of ZRap is quite simply that you specify the position of points of correspondence between your two heads. 
And you really don't have to have a lot of these. In fact, I believe you can even use your app without even specifying any points of correspondence. But uh, it is better that you do specify at least a few just to increase the accuracy of using ZRAP there. So what I like to do at a minimum is to add points of correspondence. You can see that every time that I click, it's going to add a little dot somewhere and uh, you will see a number written on it. This is written super tiny because there's nothing I can do about that. And pretty much the idea is that you simply specify points of correspondence between your two different models, right? So I've clicked here once at the inner canthus of my head, and I will do the same thing on my uh, Dynamesh head right here. I will click there, to, uh, click there as well. And now uh, ZRAP will consider that these points are supposed to match. ZRAP, once it does its wrapping process, will try to bring these points to be as close possible as it possibly can. So I will do the same thing on the outer canthus. And of course, you know, if you do uh, click using different orders of points, it's going to screw it up. So don't do that. And I will simply do it again at the corner of the mouth there. You could do it more. If you wind up having a uh, wrapping solution that is uh, too inaccurate for you, you could continuously add more points to increase the accuracy of the thing. But there is a threshold, all right? There is a, such, such a thing as having too many points for ZRAP because it's good to let the algorithm of ZRAP figure out a lot of uh, where the polygons should go, you know? If you start to add too, too many points, uh, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but at some point it will re reduce the accuracy. Of ZRAP. So it's good to keep it relatively limited. Only keep the number of points that you need. And then afterwards, once you have selected your points, go to wrapping. And that's it. You just have to wrap. That's it. You just have to click here. And um, why don't you look at that? Like, even though these two heads are completely sort of in different positions and stuff, once you start the wrapping process, this will magically wrap. Ain't that nice? I then click done. That's it. You can continue working on this in subdivision mode now, as simple as that. Let's say that you have done that transfer from subdivision, or rather, let's say that you have done that transfer from Dynamesh over to subdivision, uh, as we have done here, right? So now, um, obviously, this subdivided version of your head is obviously going to be of a lower resolution than the Dynamesh that you had started with, right? So if you just think that you take this head and you start to subdivide it, um, Obviously here, you're going to be losing out on a lot of the details that you had here previously, right? There's a lot of like little details. Maybe you've even started sculpting a few tertiary details on there or something like that. And uh, you can see as I go back and forth between these two subtools here that, you know, I, am, I have effectively lost these details. Uh, and that's a bit of a problem. So I want to show you guys how to address that. But before I do that, before I do that, all right, you may be asking yourself a question right now. You may be asking, if you've been especially attentive so far, you may be asking yourself a question, which is, Laura, what happened to the mouth bag? The subdivided head had a mouth bag to begin with, and my dynameshed head obviously did not have a mouth bag because the lips were uh, merged together. So you're, you may be like, Laura, so what, what the hell happened there? And this happened. If I go back to my subdivided head, and we look once more, let me just turn on wireframe or double-sided here, my mouth bag is still there. The moment that the volumes become way too dissimilar, at some point, ZRAP will um, kind of almost freeze it in space. It doesn't quite do that. There's, you know, it's, it's a bit smarter than that uh, as to how it works. But ZRAP, uh, if a mesh is too dissimilar, uh, like this here, um, like one has a mouth bag and the other one does not, uh, oftentimes, uh, it, it is smart enough that it knows what to do with that mouth bag and to still place it within the mouth there in a proper way. So oftentimes, you don't even have to worry about any of that, is what I'm saying. But there are cases when this will still kind of create trouble for you. And uh, I want to just talk about that just very, very briefly here. So there are cases here, uh, I guess this head won't, won't break, as you can see. But sometimes you'll wind up having things like the mouth bag will literally herniate out of the mouth, you know, like as if he's kind of vomiting his own mouth bag. I've seen that quite a few times kind of happen. Uh, it's actually very funny when that kind of happens uh, as a result from the, uh, from the wrapping process there. So in those cases, all right, uh, it's very, very simple if you want to address that, all right? You just take the mouth bag uh, before you do the wrapping process, okay? You just take the mouth bag that you have and you simply do a mask on it. 
you do a mask over the mouth back like that. So that uh, the only thing that is masked right now on this head is the mouth back or anything else that you would like to um, stay more or less solid in place over your head, you know? So, I mean, just for example, right? Let's say that I, uh, you know, let's say that for some reason, I'm like, well, I kind of want the ears to more or less keep the same shape that they have. So if I do my Z wrap again, you can also see that they're a different color right now. Yeah, so you can see that it wrapped pretty much everything, but it did not change the ears. And that's pretty much what you want to do with the mouth bag. If ever the mouth bag just uh, starts to become problematic for you. Yeah, so, but then you're like, okay, but then Laura, this is cool, but I've lost all these details I had on my surface. So what's up with that? Well, this is what's up, guys. This is what's up. All right. Once you have done your wrapping process, this is what you do afterward. You subdivide it up to the degree that you want to have it. Let's say that you want to have, you know, we, we're talking about like 3 million or so in terms of uh, polygon count was like pretty solid for a head. You know, you could go up to 12 million, but 3 million is a pretty good starting point. Um, so, okay, let's subdivide our head a few times then. So at uh, 3,000 points right now. So let's subdivide it quite a few times, right? So let's do control D, subdivide, 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 once more, once more, until we get to that magical three to five million mark. This is what we're going to do. We are going to project the details from our sculpted head over to our retopologized head. I could also do this in the context of using scan data if I have raw scan data. I'm doing this right now with a dynameshed head, but the process would be the exact same if I was starting from a scan here. Now, perhaps a little nifty trick I can use at this point. Uh, if I subdivide this, I'm going to lose all volume here for my eyelids that I have, right? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to harden those edges to make sure that they stayed relatively sharp all the way throughout the subdivision? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because we have a separation between our polygroups here. Let's go to our little crease button here. Put a crease level at 2, maybe, so that it's not too, too violent, right? Let's put our crease tolerance back to its uh, 90 degree, or actually, it probably wouldn't change much because we want to do a crease polygroup supporter. Let's do that. And now we subdivide. And it's fine that these stay like these, actually, because now I am preserving all these nice hard edges that I have everywhere. This will just help me to just have a better structure to the head afterward. So that's awesome, actually. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, all right. So what do we do now? We have to do a projection to uh, reacquire all that data that we have sacrificed. I like to create a layer just for safety's sake, okay? Because we are now in subdivision mode with our head, we may as well do that. Let's create a new layer. May as well take advantage of that. And at the same time, why don't I also take advantage of the fact that I have morph targets at my disposal? Ain't that also nice? So why don't, at the same time, I go to my morph target uh, tab right here, create, uh, or rather store a morph target. So now I have both a layer in record mode and I have a morph target that is stored all for a few reasons. And what do we do now? We do this. We go back down our history to our subdivision level one Right, so I pulled down Shift D until I was back down to number one. And now in my subtool menu right here, I will go all the way down to a place where it's written project. I will go in here to start projecting the raw data over our clean subdivision data. And here, uh, I will simply press and project all. We start having issues. We can play with the, this distance value here, by the way. If you guys start to see that your projection starts to look like Swiss cheese, you'll see what I'm referring to. If it happens to you, it's gonna be very obvious. Increase this little value right here, just very, very slowly, you know? That's 0.02 right now, put it at 0.04, then eight, you know, and just increase it very slowly, guys. But if you start having a Swiss cheese effect, this is what you need to tweak. I don't know whether we'll get one right now or not, but I guess we'll just see what happens. Maybe also for safety reason, let me mask out our eye bag and also our mouth bag. And let's do our projection. Project all. And we will do this at every subdivision level that we have. So I'm going to press D to go up one subdivision level. I will do project all. I'll keep an eye out too. I'll make sure this doesn't explode because sometimes it explodes in your face and then that's where the morph target starts to become interesting. But for now, it uh, seems that uh, everything is looking pretty good. The mouth bag and eye bag would definitely explode, by the way. 
yeah, you can see I'm starting to have issues here, right? This is the kind of problem that I was kind of, uh, that I was going to be wary of. And this is the moment where we want to blend back to our Morph Ragged before all this had just exploded in my face. No dirty jokes, please. I'm speaking to myself. Now, we're obviously going to lose a lot of details here. I really want to be picky about this, going back down my subdivision levels. And then maybe at a level two, perhaps, you know? And then I would start to, to, to be just extremely careful with my projections. Just be a lot more careful with my projections, you know? I'm glad we had a chance to explore layers and morph targets and scans and all these things, because there's a lot of like really interesting workflows there. On a typical video game production, uh, all your main characters and all your side characters too, like almost everyone, will all have the same topology for their head and sometimes even for the body there. Uh, which makes it very easy in a production environment uh, to start to even blend together different faces uh, and to create uh, um, sort of new faces out of the ones that you have, you know. But that's it, guys. That will wrap up our class for today. I wish you all to take care and I'll see you next time.